Good morning and welcome to our morning mini this morning. Uh, so today I have a very special morning mini planned. One in honor of Valentine's Day, coincidentally. It is Valentine's Day today. And also in honor of my dear sister, who as many of you know from um, the Facebook post that she passed away last week. Um, actually, I found out just before last week's morning mini um, so I had to cancel the event and run out the door. And it has been a very rough week, as many of you know who've lost a loved one. It's, there's a, you know, it's, it's just upheaving. But I wanted to paint today, um, when I have my little studio buddy with me, Angel. Angel, say hi, come here, come here, come on up. Come here, she's a bird. So we have Angel, Angel was Sherry's bird. And she wants to go on my tripod. Okay, you can go there. Um, and she is an umbrella cockatoo. Whoop. Let me move her a little closer so you can see her. There we go. So she's going to be painting with us this morning. Um, but today my morning mini is going to be a, um, it's sort of an angel painting. Um, I want to share this with you because if you've lost somebody or if you want to remember somebody that maybe passed years and years ago, um, this is a great way to just paint something that really reminds you of your loved one and it doesn't need to look like them to represent them and that's very important in painting because you can paint things that represent things and you don't have to draw something realistic or, or specific even um, but today we're going to be drawing something and it's funny because um, I was organizing Sherry's jewelry. Sherry loved jewelry. And a lot of her jewelry, and even some of her trinkets in her house, um, had wings on them. And she also had a, she has a necklace with heart, a heart with wings around it. She has several earrings that have wings on it, as Angel demonstrates. <laughs> you showing us your wing? Are you showing us your wing? Let's see your wing. Oh, you're so cute. So, with, um, with that in mind, we're going to paint a heart with wings in honor of Sherry. And I'll tell you a little bit more as we paint. Um, there's a little more behind the story and the symbolism there. So I'm going to, Angel might have to move away. We'll, we'll see how she does. I'm going to move my, um, so I'm going to paint on a little 4x4 four four today. But I might take this painting and paint it really large. Um, if I can get it to look like what I have pictured in my head on this little mini canvas, then I might just paint it really large and, um, and give it to her son, my nephew, um, it, to remind him of his lovely mother. Um, and let me just unwrap my little canvas here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my camera around so you can share my view of my desk. And then we're going to do, I'm going to show you some references that I found last night going through and thinking about today's project. I want you to pull up some references and I'm going to show you my process um, of designing it as well as the painting itself. All right, so let me move my camera to my tripod here. Oh, sorry, Angel. We've got to get used to each other in the studio here. All right, I guess you can stay there if you want. So Angel is sitting up on my perch right here. All right, so here's my little canvas. And I wanna show you some references on my, um, my iPad really quickly. Let me plug in my microphone so we got some nice sound going here. You gonna come back? What you doing? You wanna come back on my shoulder? Here. You want to stay there? All right, we'll see what she does. We'll see if you like it up there, huh? Is that a good spot for you? All right, so I put this aside for a sec. And let me bring up some photos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a shared album. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can create a shared album and then just share it with yourself. And when you share it with yourself, then you're the only one that gets to look at it, but it doesn't take up space on your phone. You can hold the photos in a shared album and then delete them on your phone. 
So I, I have a folder I call Inspirational References. And the first picture that I saw, this one, I absolutely love the most. Now it's already somebody's painting, so we're not going to copy this exactly, but we can take inspiration from it. And I'll tell you what I'm taking from this. One, of course, the wings. I love the darker background. I think it's also symbolic of what I want to put in this painting is Sherry loved dark colors. <clears throat> she loved purples and burgundies and jewel tones. So I, and I love the messiness of this. And I might even add, I don't know if this is gold or what is on here, but it's giving me the idea to put gold in my painting, gold or silver. Okay, so then, then this is another example of, of wings that make a heart shape. Um, and I love the way it's very messy also. So brushy and messy is kind of like a theme I have. <clears throat> now this showed, I like the way this showed an actual heart and then wings around it. So I, have, I had to make a decision. Do I want to have a, an actual heart in the middle um, with wings or do I want wings in the shape of a heart? So that's, I might, I might do two paintings, um, maybe one with you guys and then maybe one a little later on and see which one I like more before I go to a large one. So here's another one with like the heart and the wings. Um, but the heart's kind of small. I think I'd want the heart to be larger. Here's another one with the, the wings making a big heart. And, and then here's a whole screenshot of like different variations. We have like clouds, we've got, this is very angelic. But see, I'm not even gonna get this detailed with mine. Um, I wanna have mine being a little bit more, <clears throat> a little bit more abstract in a way. Hi, Anne, happy Valentine's Day. This one I really like too. Again, it's like the messy wings in the shape of a heart. And then I think there's more and more, and then like here's a little tattoo with the wings around a heart. I kind of like these wings in that shape. See, so by looking at references, whether it be a tattoo, a line drawing, or a full painting, you just start to see what, is the, what are the qualities that you want to put in your painting. All right, so now let me grab a pad of paper. And since it's really close to me, I hope there's a piece of paper in here. I'm going to just use, use tracing paper today. All right, let me put my iPad away so that I can also um, pull up okay. the Facebook page and make sure that I can see what you see. Hi, honey. Oh, you're such a good girl. You've been so good. All right, let's go to Facebook. Um, I'm just going to go to Facebook on my iPad, just two seconds. And let's see if I have a piece of paper in here. And probably don't. All right, let me grab another pad of paper. Oh, shucks. All right. All right, so it's nice to do a little sketch before you plan a painting. Um, it just helps you kind of work out your ideas and make some decisions visual decisions before you even get started. All right, so let's get a pencil and, oh my gosh, my pencil selection. Okay, I think I have all my good pencils in my bag. So this is just a little number two pencil, it's no big deal. Okay, so we're gonna do a heart painting um, and we're gonna do a heart painting with wings. This is in honor of my beautiful sister who is now an angel. And if I think about a square composition, I want wings to be, I think I might, like I could do a, a diagonal like this and have it be messy. I might do, a, let me do a couple sketches. So I like to sketch really light, but today since I'm on camera, I'm gonna sketch a little darker so that you can see it. So imagine if this is feathers Okay, so there's the there's the one at an angle, and let me see if I would like it better at an angle or just straight up and down. So each one's gonna have a different feel. Oh, angel feather, thank you very much, Birdie. Um, and then I'm gonna try one that's just kind of like straight up and down here like this. Oops. 
Angel, I just have to make sure <coughs> you want Angel to poop on camera. That'd be gross. Maybe you should move to the back of my chair so you don't go to the bathroom on my, <laughs> my desktop. <laughs> We're going to find out some interesting things about having a big parrot in the studio. Okay, so now I'm doing one that's sort of centered. So now you can decide if you think that it looks better centered and, and straight or So centered and straight or at, a, or at an angle. I thought the angle looked a little bit more abstract, like a little bit more movement, a little more messy. Um, now these are going to be like wings. Okay, now, or I can do we can also do a heart. So we can also do a heart in the middle. And then from our references that I showed you earlier, there we can have a, a like sort of wings coming around the heart. Like that. The one thing I kind of like about the heart, the actual heart being here, is because it looks like the wings are sort of like surrounding the heart. But I don't, I don't know too if I were to paint this larger and give it to <coughs> her son, if he would want a large painting of a heart, or if he would want the wings just in the shape of a heart. You know, like what would be more significant to him? So you're liking the heart. I'm thinking I'm leaning towards the heart too. Because it looks like there's the um, the heart is attached to something. All right, I'm going to do one more quick sketch. So this is where your thinking takes place. When you're sketching, this is where you can think about things and play around with the different ideas. And it's by putting it physically here and not just thinking of it in your head, then you can um, you can better actually come to a decision. You really don't know sometimes until you see it what's going what's gonna to work out the best. So I'm going to try the wings maybe a little bit away from the heart versus so much surrounding it. And I want to give the wings some little I like them kind of coming over the heart a little bit, but I don't want them to be sim I don't want them to be perfectly symmetrical either. I want the wings to have some asymmetry. And I want them to look like big big angel wings like like it like archangel wings, just enormous and and full. Okay. All right, so I, I think I'm leaning towards one of these and I'm looking at some of the comments. Maybe the heart with the wings at an angle. Yeah, the, I think the wings are gonna be a little bit asymmetrical. I think I like that idea. <clears throat> heart on an angle with wings outside, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's, there's so many different things that we can play around with with this. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is color. So I know that Sherry loved things that were very um, dark and um, like rich in color. Like she wasn't a pastel girl at all. Oh, my iPad's about to go, darn it. Let me go to, hi, sweet girl. Are you making kissy sounds? Good girl, hi. oh, that's a good girl. <clears throat> All right, so let's start with our little painting. So I want to bring in colors that are going to be reminiscent of Sherry 
and the colors that she loved. I might change this to a rectangular painting later, like if I paint it larger, but this is more to play around with color and also to create something that is very universal. I want this to be able to apply to a man or a woman. So if you have somebody in your um, life that you want to you want to paint a little memory of, then you can use this concept and paint it any way that you like. You can paint it, um, well, you can choose different hearts, you can choose different wings, you can choose different colors. Um, but I think whatever, however you paint your painting, when you think, when you're painting it with that special person in mind, then it doesn't matter what it looks like. It will represent that person um, to you and the love that you have for that person. Okay, so I want a little bit of purple. So I'm going to use a little bit of black to maybe deepen some of these colors, but it's going to look really pretty. All right, let's get some white. So we're painting a little heart today for Valentine's Day. Well, it's honestly, it's just coincidental that it's Valentine's Day. I'm painting this for Sherry. And I think I like the black background, but I'm going to not make it solid black. So I'm just going to start off, I'm going to use two brushes today. A, um, since I'm using a tiny canvas, I'm just going to use one, one flat brush and one pointy brush. All right, we've got a water cup and paper towel. And let's get um, a little bit of black. So I'm going to kind of paint the canvas black, but I might mix in a little bit of brown. I don't necessarily want it to be uh, solid black. So let's get some raw sienna. Okay, so the colors that I have today are going to be, uh, they're just black, bright red, dioxazine purple, and then this is a raw sienna. Do you want to come down from there, Angel? Do you want to come down? Come on. There you go. Good bird. You can go on my chair. Good bird. Okay, so let's get some black in here. And and I'm painting it messy just because I kind of I'm kind of getting myself a little bit in that mo that mood of that this is not going to be the a perfect background. So I'm just going to I want to kind of mess it up right from the beginning. Just be free about it, be loose, and think messy. So I'm adding some white to get kind of a gray. Put in some more black. Now when you're painting a little painting and you're trying to imagine it big, you can use smaller brush strokes. So see I'm going to use smaller brush strokes on here to just kind of like, just make it look a little bit like it might be a larger painting. We're, we're kind of miniaturizing it, so I want to make it look like this could be <coughs> a larger one with lots of brush strokes. Okay, so there we go. <clears throat> so they can be different directions. The painting can doesn't doesn't have to have a a specific direction or a specific um, texture. Just whatever whatever you feel is going to give you the look you're going for. And I don't really know exactly the look I'm going for. I'm kind of want to have it look beautiful and dramatic. Um, I know Sherry loved things that were dramatic, but I also want to imagine her in a bright place. So I want to have, I don't want it to look dark and gloomy. I want it to have a, a good positive vibe to it because I, like I said, I want to think of her in a positive place. So 
But I think the dark, you know, is just reminiscent more of Sherry's taste. All right, so I think that's pretty nice and messy. And let me just give it a quick blow dry so we can start on our heart. And I think I'm gonna add the lightness is gonna come in the wings. And I can always lighten the background if I want to later. Come on, blow dryer, where are you? Okay, so let's just get this a quick little blow dry. All right, so now for our little heart. This isn't looking very Valentine's Day right now, but just we gotta hang in there because we're gonna go from dark to light. We wanna paint the darker areas first and then we can always lighten them as we come along. So for the heart, <clears throat> I'm going to first paint it a little bit on the pink side just so that I can get it on here and, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat. And, and then we can add and make it deeper as we made, make more layers. So I'm first, let me just get a nice red going, and I want to kind of have that red going down into purple. Now, if you want to make yours really smooth, you can make yours like much more even. I'm going to try and be a little, go a little out of my comfort zone today and be a little bit more brushy because I kind of want to keep this like loose and see, see where it goes. And if I tighten it up, I can always do another painting and make another one a little tighter. But I want to see how this can look if I just do it brushy and kind of loose. I love those deep purples in there. Sherry would love that. Okay, so. The reason why this is also such a, I really need a heart in here. Um, and I'm glad that you guys, with your comments, talked me into putting a heart in the middle. Is because, one, Sherry, if you knew her, you would know that she had the biggest heart of anyone you would ever meet. She was just such a loving, loving person. And her heart was also um, her weakness because that's what she passed away from. She actually, her heart failed um, because she didn't have a very strong heart. Uh, she was suffering from congestive heart failure, congenitive heart, congenitive heart failure, sorry. And, um, and she was being treated for that, but um, that was ultimately probably what made her heart go. And the painting, the name of this painting is going to be A Healed Heart. Because now her heart is healed. And my sister was also a massage therapist and for those that knew her and had massages by her were her clients, they knew how loving she was and how doting she was to their care and their health and their comfort. <clears throat> and her business was called um, Healing Hands. So she had healing in the name of her business and it was very much her job to heal others. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little technique here with the, um, the brush. So since I have a dark background, I'm going to use the background to be the shadows um, in my feathers. 
And then as the feathers, you know, come forward, they're going to get lighter on the tips. So when I paint, I'm painting the tips of the feathers with the brush. And you can see this brush has a nice little curve to it. And that curve is going to be the tip of the feathers. So as I come down, see as I, I mean, as I move down the, I'm going to come down to the bottom of the feather, <coughs> to the wing rather. And each feather was, is going to be one brush stroke. And then I'm just going to curve it towards the top of this wing. And, and as I paint it, if I leave the base a little bit lighter, like if I push down and pull up, I can leave that little bit of a dark space in there and it will provide that nice light to dark, the tip of that feather. You see how it's getting brighter? And I can always add a little more brightness to the tips and make those feathers even jump forward even more. But you see how it's br this, the painting is already starting to brighten up and I can continue to brighten it as I... So I want to kind of get the shape of the wings down. And wings are going to have that very thick top section which is what we are the, um, the wings are coming from. This is where like the bone would be on a bird. Put a little extra, I'm going to put some little messy feathers up here, just a little. Now on a wing, there's different size feathers. So there's going to be smaller feathers near the top of the wing and then as they come down those flight feathers get really big and large. So I'm going to start off just filling in the top part with some little small little feathers. Trying to leave a little bit of the gray in there. And then I'm going to add these little tiny feathers on the top. So right underneath that this, this top thick arch is going to be little tiny feathers, but I'm going to be turning my brush upside down and pulling up towards the feathers. So I'm just putting in little teeny feathers here. Now the, the edge of the wing can have larger feathers, so we can get larger here. And I don't want my, all my feathers to be the same direction. It's kind of hard to, to imagine, like I want messy. Do you see how that one kind of pops out? This one can come in. I want different, slightly different angles or directions. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit. And as I use white on the tips, you can see how it's brightening it. It's so, it's so easy actually. Um, once you get the direction of your brush strokes down. And I think that's what's tricky with a wing. You have to, if, you, if it helps to draw a wing on paper, just so that you can get a feel for the direction of the feathers, the flow of the feathers, if you get that down, then it's just a matter of changing the size of your brush stroke. So if you push hard and you go long, you're gonna get a nice big feather. And if you just press little and just do a little short one, you'll get a little tiny feather. Now, halfway down the wing, they're going to start getting a little like medium feathers. So I'll paint in some medium feathers here. I also want the feathers to kind of be hugging, almost like they're hugging around the heart. Um, because I want that to see, just to think like that Sherry's is being taken care of and that she's loved and so her heart is just surrounded by these wings just embracing her. So the bottom feathers are going to be the biggest and the longest, so I'm getting a little bit more white on the tip of those. 
And so I'm gonna go from medium feathers in the middle. Now the outer edge can also get larger feathers. So you can do, you can do the whole entire edge down the, the outside edge with a, a larger, uh, a larger feather, almost kind of like framing it. And then you can fill in the rest with smaller feathers. That's, that's something that I've done too when I've done feather designs. So I used to, I used to design a lot of dolls when I was working as an illustrator, and a lot of the dolls had angel wings. So I, I've drawn a lot of wings. I've drawn a lot of angel wings in the past. Um, I actually did wings on when my nephew, despite me wanting to get a tattoo, really wanted a tattoo with wings, and it was for a phoenix. So I drew him a tattoo design and I did the wings of the phoenix. And that was very detailed, of course, because I wanted it to look spectacular. But all that practice is what makes me know these things without having to practice them right here for you. But just so you know, it doesn't take, it, it, can, it can take some practice and you might want to draw a wing first or let me do some practice ones just for the sake of observation. But what I've observed is this, this top piece here is big and bold, and it's often covered with little feathers also. So if you really want to get um, you know, details, you can put little teeny feathers on this one. So there are little feathers that are covering this big piece. Okay. And then the small, so then it goes small feathers up in the arch of the wing, medium feathers in the middle, and then the longest, biggest feathers are going to be near the base. And I'm taking a little extra white. I'm going to take straight white and then just go to the tips and add some white to the tips so that they are popping out more. And then you can add a couple little messy ones if you want to sort of not be so perfect. I mean, when, when I'm instructing, sometimes I get so into the instruction that I forget to be a little bit more messy. And so then I got to come and mess it up a little bit. Okay, so I love this. I love the wings. But what I'm struggling with is I don't want it to look all dark. Um, we need to add some light in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some white to the heart to add some little like reflection down here. I'm going to add some reflection up here. Now I'm just doing it in white first and you'll see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to just, I'm going to add some white so that I can add um, a base to glaze over. So I'm going to let this dry, but let's just put in some white here. And we can soften it by wiping all brush off of all the paint, getting all the brush off, I mean all the paint off. Now this is just a dry brush and then I'm just going to scr scrub, scrub the edges to kind of soften them. I'll leave that one a little crisp. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to layer over it with some more red. All right, now for the background, I think I want to get a little lighter. It dried really dark. So I'm going to get some gray and, and black, black and white, make some more gray, and maybe just put in some little, a couple little messy brush strokes back here. I don't want it to be so solid. And I can also add more purple to the background too. Like, why not? Just I'm going to put in a little bit of purple, a little bit of black. Kind of want to mess up the background a little bit. I don't want to take away from my wings, so it's a little, it's kind of a, a, a balance here of light and dark, but. You can always paint over it. You can paint over and over and over and see if you like it lighter, see if you like it darker. I'm gonna go a little darker right up against the wing. So I'm, gonna, I'm getting some straight black and adding some black in here. 
So if you paint this for someone that you love or you paint it for Valentine's Day, just add the colors that, that make you happy. If you are wanting to go lighter, maybe you paint the background like a sky. Um, I'm almost thinking I might add a little sky up towards the top so I can have it like dark to light and make it look like there's some light above. I think that'd be kind of neat. So we're just going to play around with a bunch of different things today. And you, when you paint your painting, you can decide if you want to go light or dark. So I think I might do a little dark down here. And then maybe get really light towards the top. Let me see how that looks. I'm going to take a gamble here. I'm going to do a little bit of light. So I, I want to kind of have this, this transition from light to dark. I want to see if I can pull it off and if I still like it, the background. So I'm going to play around with the background. I want to try, th see, this is what's nice about doing a small canvas, because you can play around with an idea and you're not wasting a lot of paint, you're not wasting a lot of time or a big expensive canvas. You can just play around with it and see what works. And then if you don't like it, just paint it over or paint another one. Just paint a second one. Leave this one the way it is and then just add a second, you know, just do a little second version of it on another canvas. Okay, so I'm going to kind of transition down here to gray and then just have maybe black along the bottom. See, I like doing multiple layers of stuff because even though it seems, I know that a lot of people think like when they're painting over something that they feel that they're covering up a mistake, but sometimes it's like that's how you arrive at the best result is by making a mistake and painting over it. And it's not even really a mistake. It's really, I don't want you to think about it has to be a mistake to cover it up. It could be just playing around with another, another um, technique. Okay, so this is kind of neat. I kind of like that dark to light. It's brightening it up a little bit more. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit of blue in the top, just a little tiny bit, because I want to see if I can kind of create the idea of a sky. Maybe it's too much to go from light to dark with this. But we'll, we'll see. Just want to try a little tiny bit of blue. And that's even probably more than I want, but let's just do it. I'm going to add a tiny bit of red to the blue. And I like the little, the little darkness around the heart, like creating a little outline. I think that's, I mean, around the, um, the wings. I think that's kind of neat. just going to add a little bit of blue up in this corner. I think that's that's all I'm going to go for. It's just a little bit of blue up in the corner. Give it a little. I put a tiny bit of black in with the blue just to give it a little tiny bit of um, softness, like a, um, a slightly deeper shade of blue without it being too like little boy little boy blue I think I like that maybe I'll put a little over here I 
I really like the brushiness com coming into the background now that I'm doing it. It's actually making the wings look, I think, a little bit more like they're moving. It's giving some movement to the wings. I'm going to put a little more blue in here. Okay, so I think I'm, I think I'm done fussing with the background. Hello. Hello. How's my girl? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with finishing up the heart and finishing up the wings. So I wanted the heart, I've added this white on here because I want to create a very, very deep red, but I want it to be bright right here. So if you paint a transparent color like red over dark, it, it's dark red. But if you paint it over light, it, it gets lighter. So do you see how that lightened up right there? And it's still dark over the dark red, but wherever you paint this transparent red over the that light, it's going to be a brighter red. And I think I'm going to add just a tiny bit of black to the red, just because I want it to be more of a burgundy. I don't want it to get too, too bright and cartoony looking. I want it to look rich and like a mature red. So I mix a little bit of black in there. I had some purple from before too. I'm going to get a little bit of purple in there just because I know Sherry loves purple. So I want this to be kind of like a a purple red shadow down here. So purple and red down below, getting it nice and deep and rich. And then this little highlight right here, I'm just going to take it straight red. So I want it to kind of have like this little backlight. So I want this to be a little highlight along here. And I'm going to put bright red down right down there. So it just sort of defines the bottom of the heart and doesn't just disappear into this black background. Okay, so it's coming out really cool. I really like it. I'm, I can't decide if like, if, if the whole thing were light in the background, I think the wings wouldn't show up. But I think the darkness down below it looks kind of neat. I might just add a little extra wings down here. I still feel like this is not defined enough, so I'm going to add a little, little extra, little extra white there. Maybe I'll just add a little tiny white to the top, like a little shine. You have to wait till that dries. <sighs> Angel feather. Now for our feathers, now that the feathers are dry, now we can start adding a little bit of um, more white. I'm going to turn my canvas so that the point of my brush is easier to get the point of the, of the feathers. So let's just highlight a couple of these white tips. We don't want to do all of them, we want to be selective so that the ones that are highlighted are catching the light. Like maybe if the light's coming from here, then these are catching the light, but not the ones in the back. And on this side, maybe this, the, maybe this side's catching the light. So I'm going to put a little extra white in these and a little extra white along the top of the wing. So cute. Oh my gosh, it's so adorable. Now I want it to look like it's also like just hugging the heart a little bit more. So let me just put in another little couple feathers here, just sort of really hugging the heart here. I 
want it just to look like she's just surrounded by this beautiful, these wings just being hugged. A great big Sherry hug is what we would say because Sherry would give killer hugs. Okay, so there's some little messy, mess it up a little bit up here. And I'm gonna get a little bit brighter in the background, so I'm just gonna pick a one area where I can get a little bit brighter, the second coat. So I'm gonna put that white in there, and, and then I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue and white. So when you wanna do a little tiny touch of color, you use a little tiny bit of paint. And you might need a damp brush, so I've just got a little little bit of water on my brush and just using a tiny bit of white and blue, I'm just going to blur out that edge. Now if it starts to get over to your other area of blue, just take a little water and you can just thin it with water. Water can help to blend. Even if the paint's dry, the water's just helping you put down a thinner layer. So there, I kind of almost want it to look like a little beam of light, like a little heavenly beam of light coming down on my heart. Which might take several coats because the white can be a little transparent and I'm using water so it was also getting a little thin. Looks almost like it's shining. I love it. All right, well, I think I'm gonna finish up there. I really like it. And I wanna add some gold, um, but let me see if I have some gold metallic paint. I know she loved silver also. Um, let me see if I can do anything with silver. So this is a silver marker, and I'm gonna see if it works. Oh yeah, it does. So let's see if this works. Yeah, it does, but I think I want a little bit of gold in here. So I'm just putting a little bit of metallic silver onto some of the feathers. Not the tips. I don't want to get the tips gray because I already added all my, maybe I'll just put some little silver in there. So where the where the feathers have a little shadow, I'm putting a little bit of a, because this is ultimately the, the silver has a little bit of a gray. So I don't want to put it where, I don't want to put it where there's black, and I don't want to put it where there's white. And let me think, oh, let me see if I have some gold paint. I'll be right back. I just have to go to the other side of the room into one of my paint drawers and see if I have a little bit of gold. Okay, so I do have some gold. So this is Liquitex Basics, and it might not be the look I'm going for, but I'm gonna give it a try and see if it doesn't give me a little bit of metallic. So I'm gonna put a little bit of gold on the wings. And I want it to be kind of sheer. I don't want it to be very really heavy. So I'm just gonna pick, up, pick a couple spots Put a little gold on there. Oh, I like this. I think I like this. So uh, this, this gold is pretty sheer, which is nice because it just gives a little light little light metallic tipping to the wings. I really like it. We don't have to do all the wings. I don't want it to be completely gold. I just want like little, little touches of metallic. 
kind of like that, those first wings that I showed you. They were kind of, they had like brown and gold in it. I love that. And you can really, I don't know, you can't see it too much on camera, but you can really kind of see um, that little bit of gold. I don't think I'm going to do the halo because I think the halo might be a little bit more than I wanted to put on here. But a halo is another good idea if you want to add a little halo. I don't want to look too tattoo-y, even though, of course, this, this is a popular theme for a tattoo, as I've noticed. I'm just adding a little more white to my sky with a little water on the edges. Let's get that little bit of bright beam in there. And I think that's it. I think I'm done. So this is titled A Healed Heart. And this is for Sherry. This is her little Valentine's Day special. And so when you're painting the sides of a canvas, I think this came out so beautiful that I'm going to just paint all the sides black. And this, I would love to see everybody's painting. And if you paint this, um, whether you paint it for Valentine's Day today or if you don't get a chance to paint today because you're going out to dinner or something, if you paint it later on, it, this is not a seasonal painting. It's not just for Valentine's Day. This could be for anybody that you love um, who's um, physical or non-physical. Hi, girly. And Angel's climbing up on my shoulder. She'll say goodbye in a minute. And then um, post it in the, um, on our page. And if you post it on our page, um, put the name of the person that you painted it in honor of. And I have to thank Linda for giving me the idea last week of painting something that is angel related. So I didn't paint an angel, Linda, but I did paint an angel wings. And I love the idea of the heart. And let's just, hold on Angel. I'm gonna put my camera up so we can say goodbye to Angel. Let me turn my camera around. There we go, what you doing? Whoop. Oh, she's going out of there. You're gonna go on my, my tripod? There you go. Okay, so here's Auntie Sherry's painting. What do you think? Did you like it? I think it came out so cute. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching and happy Valentine's Day. This is so cute. I'm gonna go put on a little easel. What do you think, sweet girl? Do you like it? Uh -huh. You say hello? Good girl. All right, thanks everyone for painting today. Hope you have a great Valentine's Day and I can't wait to see everybody's paintings. Bye, guys. Say bye.